Hi there, everyone. Welcome to our second workshop of this workshop series. Um, we have offline strategies for customer retention today. So as brands are increasingly understanding the value and the meaning of uh, customer's experience when it comes to providing and building meaningful, lasting connections, I um, wanted to talk a little bit about how Postal can help create memorable customer journeys that stand out from the first moments of your customers to renewal conversations. Um, today, we'll start off a little intro. Um, my name is Katie Castillo. I have been at Postal for nearly two years now. I started in our sales development function. Um, and the best part of my job there was planning strategic campaigns using Postal to sell Postal in partnership with our ABM and marketing team. Um, and I identified an opportunity to better serve our customers in planning and executing um, ABM or other marketing campaigns um, to drive real ROI. Um, so since February, I have been in this new role as a global campaign strategist, and I am here as a resource in your postal partnership. Um, anything from, you know, brainstorming an initial concept for a campaign, if you're, you know, trying to think about a creative way to um, incentivize the onboarding process with your customers, or if you're trying to think about, you know, you have five top enterprise accounts um, that you need to drive retention or it's, it's a big part of what you're being measured on, um, let's come up with a, a creative campaign to um, incentivize those renewal conversations sooner or um, drive engagement with those accounts to make it a shoe in right, for them to, to be um, renewed. So anything from brainstorming initial concepts to crafting content or copy for your campaigns, it's a Love language, as I say, of mine is copywriting and um, and then enabling your marketing and sales or CSM or account manager team uh, to execute these campaigns. So use me, reach out to me. I'm here for you. Um, there are a lot of ways that Postal drives key outcomes throughout the customer lifecycle. Uh, with onboarding, right, we can think about how can we use small gifts to drive user adoption so that our customers reach key milestones that are going to deliver a return on their investment quicker. Uh, relationship management, right? This is kind of a, a no-brainer, but how can we use gifts to inspire customer delight throughout the customer journey? Um, how can we leverage gifts or virtual experiences as an opportunity to cross-sell our customers or upsell them um, or even expand into other business units. And then lastly, renewal conversations, right? How can we incentivize having those conversations sooner? Um, how can we drive more value? And there is literally no way that I could have fit 12 postal plays across all of these different use cases into uh, 25 minutes here. So I'm going to be talking about two of these, um, you know, key outcomes that we want to drive. And we're going to have a part two to this, uh, this specific topic of driving customer attention, retention on July 20th. So be on the lookout for that. Um, little overview. We're going to be talking a little bit about the battle for attention that, you know, we are all soldiers in, if you will. Um, a little review over how I approach offline campaigns in this formula when I'm working with our customers. And then we will dive into a couple postal plays for onboarding and retention. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about a featured success moment with postal and user evidence um, at the end. So, Quick question, who is Netflix's biggest competitor? Is it Hulu? Is it Prime Video? Is it YouTube? Is it HBO? Any thoughts here? 
Yeah, maybe Prime, maybe YouTube. So according to Netflix chief executive, Reed Hastings, it's not Amazon Prime, it's not YouTube, it's not even TikTok or Instagram short form video content that is their biggest competition. Uh, The market is vast and there are finite hours that humans can do activities and Netflix goal is to occupy that time, occupy those moments when humans can do fun activities for themselves. So when you get addicted to a show on Netflix, you actually end up staying late to watch it, staying up late to watch it. And Hastings argues that their number one competitor is our need to close our eyes and sleep. So as a user of Netflix, you have two choices every day. You can binge watch uh, the new season of your favorite show and get some, ex- or you can get some extra sleep. And the decision that a user takes is how reven- revenue monetization and retention happens in a product like Netflix. So this comp, this concept is applicable to most products. People are substituting their time to do certain activities and their attention has become a scarce resource. This is the idea of an attention economy is that attention is a scarce resource. We talk a lot about catching people's attention at the top of the funnel to drive interest and excitement in the problems that your product solves and ultimately holding your prospect's attention long enough to sell them your solution. In fact, 80% of my conversations with you all, our customers have centered really around those top of funnel campaigns. But after they've signed the dotted line and become a customer, we know that competition for their attention doesn't disappear. Your champions, your users, decision makers, their time and attention is just as scarce of a resource. From the moment they become a customer, it's our job to keep them and to prove their investment is worthwhile. So how do you make sure that your product is the number one thing on their mind when they want to explore XYZ? Netflix goal, obviously, is to maximize the amount of time you spend using it at the expense of your sleep, but hopefully to the delight of your soul. How can we think about this using Postal to maximize your customer's attention and drive key customer milestones where they will see ROI faster? So today, we're going to talk specifically about onboarding and retention. So how can we drive user adoption and how can we incentivize retention and improve that retention rate using postal, so using offline touch points. A little review, um, when we think about creating an offline campaign, typically we start with what is the context of this campaign? What is the gift source that we wanna draw from? And what is our sending strategy? So who are we part? Are we partnering with any other teams to do this? And then how are we actually sending that gift? So breaking down campaign context, right? What are the goals of this campaign? What's the timeline we're dealing with? Who's our audience? What's the budget that we have? Are there any teams other than, you know, the one or two people I'm speaking with today? Um, involved in execution of this campaign, what are the measurements of success, and what tactics do we have at our disposal, what tech stack do we have, Um, what automation essentially can we build out as part of this campaign to take some of the load off you in manual tasks. And as far as the gift sources, within Postal you have, you know, a couple Key places to draw from, first of all, is Paper Plane Agency. So this is our internal agency. We work with you to create a, it might be a a custom unboxing experience where you have branded and unbranded elements, right? Um, Postal warehouse kits or bundles. So whenever you create swag or if you're just joining Postal from another platform or just doing things in-house, you can send all the swag you've already created to our warehouses. You can create, you know, on-demand bundles or pre-packed kits um, that you can leverage as part of your campaigns. 
And then obviously there's the our on-demand marketplace where you have thousands of items at your disposal to send around the world. When we think about sending strategy, so obviously there are a couple of key ways to send in postal. You can send a gift directly to someone if you have their address. You can send a gift through a magic link, which is great uh, when you think about putting a gift through any different, any kind of channel that you want, whether it's an email or a LinkedIn message or a text message, um, infinite opportunities. Magic link is, you know, a static link. You can drop it anywhere. And then a personalized gift email. The way I think about these emails is, you know, it's a it's a branded unboxing experience for your inbox. So it's something that really stands out. Um, as of yesterday, we got updated stats that our personalized gift email open rate is right around 72%. Um, when you think about average open rates for emails, that's pretty darn high. Um, when we're thinking about customer specific engagement, um, that number jumps even higher too. So something to keep in mind when you think about how to best leverage uh, that gift offer. Okay, so when a prospect becomes a customer, the whole go-to-market team rejoices, right? And then we enter a new stage of the customer life cycle, which is onboarding them. And the goal is always accelerating their pace to ROI and to keep them on this path you need to hold their attention, keep them accountable through the onboarding and implementation stages of your solution. Excuse me. Typically tactics used in an onboarding process might be video calls or self-led learning, emails, but to truly capture their attention and keep them moving forward, you can build targeted offline touch points into their immediate post-sales experience. So we'll walk through a couple examples here. Number one, onboarding celebration kit. So a welcome to company kit. Think about this as, you know, you send a kit to a new hire. Um, if you have time on your side and you want to create an essential curated unboxing experience to celebrate customers starting or completing a customer onboarding process, um, maybe even re-engage them if they've been ghosting you for a while during the process, a little hey, like so excited to continue this journey with you. I know that we're a week behind where we wanted to be. Wanted to send you over this welcome kit. Um, there are infinite ways, right, that you can create a, a custom swag kit um, through paper plane. Or maybe you already have swag created. Um, it's living in our warehouse and you want to maybe create a, a signed note from your CEO paired with swag that you've already created, um, you could send that out instead. You don't necessarily have to create something entirely new to celebrate your new customers. And it's a great way also to use swag that you've already created to save some money there. But um, yeah, so if having the ability to personalize the onboarding kit experience um, based on the customer is maybe a bigger priority for you as well. Creating those bundled options in Postal Warehouse might be a better fit um, where you might forfeit some of the exact unboxing experience for this option. The warehousing bundles really allow you to pick and pack, you know, which say swag items go in which case, uh, which kit, sorry. Um, or maybe you have one to two case studies or best practice one pages that you want to include in these bundles. Um, so that is one option there. Another idea is gamifying onboarding. And we'll talk more about this one in depth in a minute. But I want you all to think about a key customer milestone or two in your onboarding or implementation process that really signifies a you know, they're getting this moment. How can we, how can we create uh, an incentive to get your customers to that milestone quicker? That's the concept here. And we'll walk through it, an example, uh, a campaign example in a moment. And lastly, um, direct mail drip campaigns. So this is, this last campaign idea is super low cost, super high impact if you can approach it strategically. So you can get super custom with this if you wanted to make 
But if you wanted to make a more scalable approach, you could build a three-step subscription within Postal to deliver varying direct mail pieces to customers. Um, you know, creating a subscription from scratch within Postal, maybe you're building a three-step subscription um, that has that highlights three different tactical tips from your best customers to help these new customers achieve ROI more quickly. Uh, maybe each note card or one pager that you send out includes a QR code that leads to a landing page with you know, video content to help them implement those tips. Or maybe you include a QR code for a $5 Starbucks card to keep them caffeinated as they continue onboarding. Uh, the name of the game, right, is is keeping them engaged and holding on to their attention so that they have the most success with your solution quickly. Gamification. So gamification can help businesses nudge customers towards certain behaviors by rewarding those behaviors you'd like users to repeat and ultimately resulting, hopefully, in sustainable engagement. So especially when we think about product-led growth, go-to-market motions, you have the data you need um, regarding customer usage to identify those one to two key milestones that you can build an incentive program around. Um, and research shows that gamification strategies increase engagement by almost 50%, um, boost brand loyalty by almost 25%, and brand exposure by 15 um, So. It's a great strategy to lean into if you have um, kind of those milestones in mind, right, that you're hoping to drive. So going back to our formula, um, I'm going to walk through an example internally uh, as how we've tested this gamification model. Um, so first, campaign context, right? So the goal of this, this campaign um, you know, we recognize that a huge percentage of our users here at Postal um, are sellers, and it's our customer success manager's job to ensure that all those sales users feel enabled to use Postal well as quickly as possible. So how can we use Postal to drive sales usage within Postal? The target audience of this, um, you know, we find the lowest hanging fruit, maybe it's 15 postal customers who have limited sales users or usage in postal. And some key success metrics that we wanna look at, um, measuring quantity and the quality of the sends is number of gifts sent per user, number of gifts redeemed, number of meetings booked. Um, we know that a higher number of gifts is a sign of moving, being sent is a sign of moving from crawling with postal to walking or running. So this is a key milestone that we want to think about gamifying. And gifts redeemed or meeting is booked speaks to the quality of the gifts that the reps are sending and reps capitalizing on what's performing well with their audience. So pivoting in real time. Um, maybe they find that leveraging a gift the day of the meeting increases their show rate by 30% or sending a gift three days post-demo acceler accelerates um, that stage of the deal. Maybe it's not how personalized they're getting at the top of the funnel, um, but where they're offering that gift. So maybe 80% of their gifts are redeemed through LinkedIn conversations versus email. So they can double down on that playbook. So with the gift source, the easiest way to keep this simple, right? And leverage the postal marketplace for is to leverage the postal marketplace for these gamification plays. So using lower value gift cards or low cost consumables like this incredible unicorn filled with candy, or maybe it's leftover swag you've already created. It's in the warehouse, just sitting around and create a custom insert card to keep costs minimal, but still feel personalized, personalized when you know your customers are uh, reaching those, must, those customer milestones. Um, as far as sending strategy, you know, we know that leveraging gifts through the sales process, partly a quantity game, partly a quality game. Uh, the more gifts that reps send out, the more likely they are to get acceptances. Um, so we, we, when we set these goals for our, um, our sales reps after the enablement, 
uh, we have two goals in mind, one that's more geared towards a quantity behavioral goal. Um, so high quantity of sends. Um, when a sales user sends 50 gifts, the CSM gives them a $10 gift card through a collection. The goal is to get the users active in the platform and seeing how easy it is for them to send gifts to target prospects. The more they send, the more they see how easy it is to send a gift as part of their normal prospecting workflow. And then we've got quality. So a quality behavioral goal. Um, when a sales user's fifth postal gift is redeemed, a CSM sends them their choice of postal swag with a custom insert card. Um, you know, I was an SDR at Postal before I led the team. There's a huge dopamine hit when a cold prospect accepts your Postal. So I know that feeling when you send a high quality gift and it lands well with the prospects. Um, and the more that, the more gifts individual contributors are sending out, the more they receive that ongoing feedback about how those gifts are landing and how um, they're able to hone in on the best stages to leverage gifts throughout the deal cycles. So the, the strategy for sending this is pretty simple, right? We're going to create postal collections for each challenge, gift card collection, and a swag collection. Um, just create magic links for each collection that the CSM team can use. And then create a template with a magic link for the CSMs to send out when challenges are accepted. So in terms of cost, right, this is a pretty low cost um, gift. You could go as low as $5 gift cards, right? Um, but if you have swag already created, it's just the cost of sending that swag to the recipient as well. So this is one example of gamification. Um, and all of those examples, right, just for onboarding are great examples to drive customer engagement that will assist in facilitating renewal conversations. You know, if you set someone up well at the beginning, um, that builds trust and it makes it easier for your customers to say yes to additional years of business. But there are definitely some opportunities pro to proactively use Postal to set yourself up for impactful, memorable customer renewal conversations. So a couple, uh, quick, quick quote here, 78% um, of B2B buyers said renewing a contract with an existing supplier was easier than finding a new one. This is very familiar to all of you, I'm sure. Um, but that doesn't mean that we sleep on prioritizing those conversations. There's no process that 100% guarantees that a customer is going to renew. But there are intentional behaviors and habits that you can implement to keep your customers happy and more likely to renew. Um, so here's a couple examples of using Postal to get ahead of those renewal conversations. So number one is creating must-attend executive business reviews or quarterly business reviews. Um, these are likely a critical step of your engagement strategy for customer renewals. Um, but how can we create excitement and FOMO around those EVRs that your post-sales team is running? Um, you can build an incentive playback for annual EVRs that your post-sales team can leverage uh, built offline touch points into their strategy, making these conversations must attend events. So maybe different roles get different gifts depending on their role in the evaluation process. So you can almost create a tiered approach. Maybe the decision maker gets a bottle of coupe with a personalized, you know, it's personalized to their name, it says the best is yet to come. Maybe the next uh, the champions get a plan, like looking forward to our, our additional growth. You can build three cre the, excuse me, you can build three key questions into the gift redemption process to gather valuable feedback and help frame your conversations with members involved at different parts of the renewal process. So this is something that I feel like a lot of people sleep on, right? Is on the landing page of the gift redemption, you can actually customize the fields and um, make them, you know, you must answer these questions in order to redeem your gift. So some examples, right? Which other employee's attendance is essential for our EBR? So just that idea of like, how can I go deeper and wider into this account and bring all of the necessary voices into this executive business review? 
Do you anticipate any of the following challenges playing a big role in renewal conversations? So budget limitations, haven't seen a strong ROI, not enough executive buy-in, anything else. Um, that way you know how to build the content right around the CBR. And then how likely are you to take us with you if you move to a new company? So just gauging you know, the, the customer sentiment there. You could take this play a step further by creating a warehousing bundle um, to pair maybe an air plant with an actual physical personalized one pager highlighting a return on investment or key business outcomes accomplished for X company with your solutions, setting that ahead of your EBR, um, really a, a powerful way to wow them and to get in front of them in a new way. Uh, maybe it's you're, you're hosting a virtual experience on the postal platform um, where you know, you're gonna make a cocktail together and walk through all of the, the return on investment and you send them an invite to that EBR um, that has a custom cocktail glass and you know the um, one pager highlighting ROI that that company has seen. Obviously, this would be a very like curated ABM play for those high value customers. But there are so many ways that we can personalize and customize this experience for you. Um, second would be uh, customer survey incentives. So we know that when we engage with our customers and hear them out, they feel valued. This leads to increased satisfaction levels, loyalty, lower rates for customer churn. Um, so quarterly customer surveys can really give us a pulse check on customer health scores and how likely they are to come back to products and services time and time again, and how likely they are to explore additional product offerings, how likely they are to renew. And we know that Con consumer renews reviews have become mission critical to customer acquisition. Um, and we may also assume that customers who leave positive reviews, particularly unprompted, are loyal customers. So what impact does contributing reviews have on customer loyalty to a brand? And the key connection um, is that loyal customers tend to leave more product reviews and those reviews are becoming more and more critical to successful businesses. I'm going to walk through an example, uh, another internal example of how Postal has used Postal to incentivize customer surveys and then additionally generate G2 reviews. So again, here's our formula. We're going to walk through the context, gift source, sending strategy here. Um, customer engagement is the lifeblood that fuels any thriving business. Um, you know, finding ways to effectively incentivize customers to participate in these surveys and provide valuable feedback can be a challenge, um, might result in more unenthusiastic feedback. So the objective of this survey, uh, quarterly survey, was to increase customer engagement and generate valuable feedback. So by using a non-traditional survey incentive, this campaign stood out of the inbox from standard surveys and created more engaging, a more memorable experience. The ultimate goal was to generate as many responses as possible and gather feedback that could be used to improve the postal platform. As a secondary goal, um, the campaign aimed to generate reviews on G2, uh, further enhancing our reputation in the market. As far as the timeline, um, this is a play we do quarterly. The focus of the survey changes every quarter. This one was more of a product focused. Um, and so as such, the audience kind of changes as well. But for this example, postal customers who met certain usage criteria in the past 30 days. So we wanted to gain feedback or gather feedback from customers who'd been using the product a lot recently. So met certain criteria there. Um, to give us the, the most valuable feedback. The budget for this, we had about $15 allocated for each gift. Um, and then a $500 incentive at the front end for survey completion. We did partner with user evidence um, for a third party survey uh, as far as kind of gathering survey information. 
um, gift source. So two plays here. So we offered that $500 incentive to anyone who completed the survey. They were entered into that drawing. And then we also offered a uh, chocolate in exchange for a G2 review by offering, you know, a unique and personalized incentive from a local business. Um, this was a really powerful way for us to generate those customer responses and reviews. And obviously a $500 gift card is always going to be pretty powerful. Um, as far as execution for this play, so we designed a survey that took less than five minutes for recipients to complete. So it was a low time commitment, high potential reward with a $500 gift card. Uh, remember, we can only hold people's attention for so long. And after completing the survey, we built a landing page and user evidence to appear for survey respondents to give them an option to earn a sweeter card, chocolate bar, in exchange for a G2 review. So while offering this was no earth shattering amount, it was $15, including shipping per chocolate bar, incredibly successful. Almost 30% of survey respondents went on to redeem their chocolate bar. Um, respondents were likely inclined to complete the G2 review, right? It was an easy lift for them mentally, given that they could recycle all those thoughts that they'd put in this the postal survey into a G2 review. And after leaving a review, users would be directed to G2 to log in and complete those reviews. User evidence monitored, monitored survey respondents who also completed the G2 reviews for us. Um, so we provided them with the magic link that they were able to send in the follow-up email to redeem their chocolate. Uh, this is what that email looked like um, and the follow-up here as well. And this is what that chocolate looked like. Campaign cost, it was $500 for the giveaway. And we did 90 total reviews um, from G2. That resulted in just under $2,000. You could run the survey on your own, right, without user evidence. But we found that having a third-party survey for us performed better than internal ones. When you build this into your customer renewal conversations, you're setting a regular cadence that makes sense for your renewal cycles to send out those incentivized surveys to customers when they hit a certain you know, time marker. So maybe it's eight months out from renewal, you're sending them a survey um, that puts them on that path to retention and upselling with the post sales team. All right, that was a lot of information to send all of you. Uh, thank you for your time and your attention. Um, I would love to connect to talk about your next campaign. Um, feel free to use this QR code to book a meeting with me. Um, we do have another, the next iteration of this um, campaign workshop series on July 20th. So we're going to be talking about offline strategies uh, for building customer sentiment and then for driving upsells or um, expansion. Uh, so join us for part two on July 20th. Thank you so much. Hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day.